Well, first I want to say uh, a big thanks to Karen for inviting me to be part of this exhibition. I also want to thank Chris and I want to thank Todd for this wonderful opportunity and for being here with all of you. This is, uh, it's a beautiful museum, it's a great space and I am delighted with the way that it was placed in the space. Uh, just it's, it's, I'm just delighted. So, and I thank you all for being here. This, this is, it's big. So where, um, I'm just gonna start by telling you a little bit about where the work comes from and maybe I need to tell you where I come from to give you an idea. And I might walk around and if you, if you want to follow me, maybe we can do that or <laughs> let's see what happens. So I'm originally from Bogota, Colombia. My dad is a US citizen who moved to Bogota when he met my mom and my mom became an anthropologist and she wanted to live in Colombia. So it was, she was like, no, I don't want to live in the US, we're going back. And he had studied uh, in the, he had studied in Mexico with the GI Bill because he did his service during the Korean War and he loved, he loved Mexico. And he thought, oh, Colombia must be like Mexico. So I'll go. And Colombia is a very different place, but it's just as wonderful. And I grew up in a household filled with art, with an, a US citizen who loved Colombia, who loved the history of art in Colombia, who loved everything that came from native Colombian populations, from you know, the objects, the, all, everything that was what we call folk art. And my mother was an anthropologist, and I spent a lot of my childhood going on my vacations with my mother to the places where she was doing field work. And so I would go to maroon communities, you know, cimarron communities in the north of, Co of Colombia. That means that these were places that still exist today that are, these are the descendants of slaves that escaped and created their own forts and those forts and it, and villages are still there today. You, you have those here as well in the south. And I, she would take me to the Putumayo, the, you know, the, the Amazon, to all these places where she was writing, where she was doing research. And that's what I saw as a child. And I grew up between English and Spanish. I also had a grandmother who taught me how to so who had, who had a traditional upbringing. So I was able to have those role models of the traditional grandmother and the, and, the, and the other mother who was a professional, one of the first women in her generation to go to university and who was fighting tooth and nail to have a space in, you know, in, in a profession that in itself was very difficult. So th this is my background. And I knew I was an artist from the time I was a kid. I moved to the US various times, being that I had dual citizenship, dual language. And so the last time that I moved was to stay. And, I, and I've been since, with all these going back and forth, they have forged the work that you're seeing here. So this work here is part of what I call uh, Mestiza Dos Veces, uh, and I call it a visual novel. So each body of work is, you could say, a voice, a character in this narrative, and it's a narrative that I think of as a narrative about the legacy of colonization. Uh, the Mestiza Dos Veces is the, is the uh, me being colonized, having a, a, a colonial education. I would consider that my, my North American education. And, uh, and so it has to do with, with all of the history of, uh, of that legacy. And so maybe I'll start with, to not you know, stay in the introduction for too long. So, so I have here various, various bodies of work. 
So back there and on this wall, you have uh, Casta paintings. And Casta paintings is inspired and informed by a, a genre of painting that occurred during the colony. And it began in Mexico. And then it continued, it had a real, a real, real strength in Mexico and in, and in Peru. And so I decided to make my own Casta paintings, being very aware of the caste system that exists in Latin America, but that exists here as well. We have it here. Uh, very, very strong, we might deny it, uh, but, it but it's here. So each of these, I invited different, uh, different women, some friends, some friends are here who posed for me. <laughs> And so these are, each one is a casta. So during the colony, there was a denomination made arbitrarily uh, of 16. So this was invented by the Spanish crown to understand what was happening in the Americas. What was this mixing of people that was bringing out this new, you know, this new race? And they created this system that was based on the taxonom taxonomical system of Linnaeus, you know, that, you know, the understanding of plants and the division of plants in the natural world. And that, that they were these drawings that were kind of frontal. You see the flower in a frontal way. And, uh, and so I thought, oh, maybe I could do that coming from there and make these figures. But I thought they should be in that pose, like when you go through a TSA machine because that is a moment where we are suspended, right? We are suspended, we are oppressed. I mean, I shouldn't say what we are, because I think we all know. I, I hear it in, the, in the, the little laughs, right? We know what it is, right? We could lose a lot, right? If, we don't know what could happen. <laughs> so they're inspired on that. Each comb, uh, I chose each comb. First, I had two combs that were part of, uh, you know, they, they existed in my mother's collection. And I had two, two masks that were also part of her, of, of her things. And the, I was always interested in these combs because I thought, wow, what, what can I do with them? What do they mean? And I, car and I carried them. So every time I go to Colombia, so the work also is about cultural memory, but cultural memory is that it's also colonization. I mean, tradition in some way is colonization. We live under those, under all of those structures, knowing and unknowingly, I think. And so later analyzing it, I was like, oh my God, of course, it's, it's you know, it's, you wear, you wear them at balls when you're like 15 or 16 years old, but it's, it's kind of to, to say, oh, you know, this from Spain, from La Madre Patria, and it's a denial of the mestizaje, of the miscegenation, of, of that history of, of you know, of, of being part indigenous. And in Latin America, it's, it's undeniable. We all are, I am, uh, my mom was, but, so each one, if you go close, they have names. So they are, they start with, so they would go from India Gentil, like gentle Indian, kind of like the savage, uh, innocent. Uh, and then, then you would have Española, and then the mixture of Española with uh, Indian, you would get Mestiza, and then Mestiza with uh, Española, you would get Castiza, and then it goes, it it goes into many different denominations. So you ha you can you can go close. I mean, and you could say, you could say you could have fifty. You could have fifty castas. You could have seventy. This is these were all, but they were also created to to put people in a caste system. That meant that some people could get jobs and others couldn't. Some people could whiten their, their, their skin and others couldn't. And that could also mean that you could become a priest 
You could enter the military or you could end up in a very low paying job. So this body of work is about that. Some of those terms exist until now. Uh, some of those terms I have used. There's a term in Bogota that is very common that is China. Everybody called me China. I called my daughter China and when I started doing this project, I realized, oh, this is a casta name. This is, and, and we use those names. So it's, it's, so there it goes again. The work is about that legacy and how those structures continue until today. I'm gonna move to here, yes? Now, if I speak very loud, will you hear me? Should I try? Yes? Oh, this is, okay. So another piece in the series is this one. This is called uh, Travelers. And sometimes I will venture into sculpture and I venture into that place because, because I'm an artist and because it's a way of always moving, always stay moving. Just keep, keep the wheel of creativity going. And so I, when we moved to Lincoln from New York where I was living for 20 years, I spent the whole year kind of picking up things from alleys and from walking in my, you know, in my neighborhood and I found this piece of wood and I started putting them together with things that I had brought from Colombia. And I bring these things uh, because they, you know, objects contain worlds. They, they signify so much. And this iron, for example, existed in my mother's, in my grandmother's house in the state of Boyacá, up in the mountains, you know, an hour and a half away from Bogota. And I think my great grandmother probably used it. Uh, the, the, this, the shoe horse is from the conquest, believe it or not. That has survived, I don't know, whatever centuries that is. And you see these in Bogota, and people don't pay attention to this. It's how we lose memory or how memory kind of functions in a very subconscious way. And this is a pre-Columbian figure uh, that I basically smuggled. I just put it in my bag and brought it back to the US. I was not supposed to. Uh, but I, but I, I'm thinking of this as the boats of migration, my own migration. Uh, and, uh, and so, you know, I cut these shapes from, from wood. Uh, my husband, Charlie, helped me do that. And, uh, and then uh, I have other, other pieces that are sculpture, but they are not here. But again, the work is about migration. It references certain, it, it, I like the juxtaposition of high and low, of using a, a piece that should belong in a museum and making a sale out of chopsticks and a piece of drop cloth from the studio and just playing with these objects to create a narrative. And in some way to aid the narrative that I'm telling with the big pieces. So in, it's, like, it's like the accessories to, the, to help the weave of the narrative. And then this piece is called River and uh, I had done a fellowship at the Smithsonian Institution back in 2008 where I photographed hundreds of samples of lace and uh, I was doing these drawings imitating how lace is made. So I was using these tiny little brushes making these large scale pieces with, the, with kind of the idea of how, how was it that trying to mimic lace and, and thinking how women felt making this kind of very painstaking work. And at some point it felt very constraining and, and a little bit oppressive. And I started opening up the, the, the way that I was making the work by 
and it, but it was tied to the content of the work. It was like, it's a river. So if it's a river, the medium has to have water because it's a river. So I started getting these squirrel brushes that were really large and, and kind of held water and you would put it on the paper and it was like these big droplets of ink and water that would flow. And it was kind of mind blowing how, how much I learned. And I, and I feel that in my work, I'm very challenged and very excited when I'm learning, when the content is going together with, with with the way that I'm making things. And this was that. So I wanted to make a river about, again, it's about the legacy of what we have done, the extraction of how we colonize everything, our rivers, our everything is, you know, it's capitalism, it's mining, it's rivers turning into garbage. And so the lace here became, became a, a mass of nature, and water and garbage and and uh, and you know and a large scale drawing that, as Karen referred in the in the painting, it also refers to my own education in the U.S. studying the American expressionists, so people like Helen Frankenthaler, and referencing referencing a woman who was one of the only women in that in that group. And, and that is, I mean, that, that I think of abstract expressionism as kind of like, it's like jazz, it's, it's a symbol of, of uh, it's, an, it's American identity. It's part of, you know, it's one of the big paradigms of what it means to be an American. It's, it's been used that way. So I was thinking of Helen Frankenthaler, but I was also thinking about how my education is, was, is still is still you know thinking of that like that was what was being taught in school and so we go to these pieces I also want to mention one thing and my friend Amelia is here so when I moved to Lincoln I took a class with my very good friend Amelia Montes and she said why don't you take my Chicana uh, US uh, Latina class and and I did, and I've taken four or five classes with Amelia, and it was a, it was a kind of like, oh my God, I was looking for these classes, I was looking for this, and it was in her class, um, reading Gloria and Saldua, and, uh, and these, you know, and these different writers, finding, finding that, that place to kind of crack open crack open a, a different way of thinking, and I'm very grateful. And I'm so delighted that Amelia's here. Yeah. And so I'll move over here. So, <laughs> oh, is that okay? All right. So these are part of, um, so I started making these here. These, I call them cornucopia. So you have the human figure, you have landscape, correct? It's in some way you have these different genres that reference the history of art. And I decided to tackle uh, the still life. And I thought, well, let me look at colonial still lifes and what they mean. And I thought, oh, a cornucopia. And what does a cornucopia mean? A cornucopia means wealth, opulence, uh, it's, it's, it's excess, it's, and I think of this cornucopia as the wealth that the Americas, all of the Americas have given to Europe and have, we have created, we have created the empires of, of Europe. Spain is Spain or was Spain because of South America, of Central America. And England is England because of all the colonies that they have had, and this colonization continues, continues in our rivers, the structures, the mental structures continue there. All of the flora in these images, they are researched in Spanish colonial painting 
and indigenous imagery. And so if you look at one of these flowers, it's not exactly invented. They, they, are, re they are researched. I have looked at, I have looked at, at uh, well, for example, there's one, I'll try to make this short. Uh, I'm, part, I'm collaborating with an artisan in Colombia that has been doing a uh, artesanía, it's called a, a craft called the Barniz de Pasto, which dates back to before the Spanish arrived, or what we could call pre-dispossession. Uh, uh, and during the colony, Spanish was engaged with Asia. You know, they were bringing back silk, porcelain, Chinese lacquer, which was very prized in, in you know, in the Americas and in Europe. And they arrive, and in the south of Colombia, they find, they find these people who are making objects and little beads that are decorated with this resin, and it looks like Chinese lacquer. And so they, they come in and they say, oh, well, can you make me, can you make me something that looks, you know, that looks like something European, but, or Chinese, but in your style, so it looks like, like Chinese lacquer. And so you have a completely new iconography that comes out from that era. And we could call it again, we could call it globalization, right? It is, it's made in Colombia, it has the imagery from Asia and Europe, and then it's taken back to Europe. So, so I have been looking at all of the imagery that comes out of these, these little boxes and, and, and chests that were made during the colony. And so that, that cornucopia is one of the first, and then these four are the last pieces that I've made. And these two are connected to a book that I made with the poet Farid Matuk. So the, each, each uh, well, let me go over here. Yes, is that okay? So I was invited uh, by Singing Saw Press in New York to make illustrations for Farid Batuk, who, who is Peruvian, Syrian, American, and he writes, we basically have very similar concerns. And, and so I made these, these uh, they were supposed to be broadsides. And, and we came to the idea together that it should be a, an accordion book. So the piece would function as an art book as well. And you could place it and read the poems and also see the images. So in many cases, I left spaces where it's kind of empty. So the idea is like you can kind of, it's almost like if you could put your hand through and then you go in on the other side, the text is there. And so the last idea was to use these pieces and, and with excerpts of his poems, which are here in the large works. And that's, that's where the work is going now. And I think that that's it. the chair. So the chair, <laughs> the chair is kind of like this. So when I make sculpture, when I make all of these pieces, there is a, there is a rigor. There is a, there is a real kind of like I'm putting one foot in front of the other. There's research. It's really, there's a part of it that is very, uh, it's very connected to the content that I want to put out there. And when I make sculpture, it's, I really allow myself to play and to kind of take from everywhere. It's, and so the chair was in my parents' home in, in, a, uh, in the shed. 
and it's like a, it's, it was there, I think it, it's very old, I don't think it's colonial, but it was there and one day we were there and Charlie was like, this is such a cool chair and me being Colombian, I couldn't see it. I didn't see it, but Charlie saw it. And so my dad took it apart and he said, oh, you're going to save the $100 that Delta is going to charge you. And he took it apart and we brought it back and it sat in the house for years, not knowing what to do with it. And one day I said, oh, this is a piece, this is a sculpture. This is, this is the chair of an inquisidor, of somebody who is, uh, you know, the inquisidor is the, it's like Torquemada is the guy that says, are you, are you Christian, you know? Are you Christian, are you, or are you Jewish, or are you practicing witchery, are you, you know, are you practicing indigenous practices, so we're gonna send you to the, you know, to the fire pit. So that's the, inqui the inquisitor, so that's, so that's the inquisitor. So, yeah, and the, and the, the face is a woodblock print part of a project that I had made for the, for uh, suffrage, for women's suffrage. And so I had made various, various images and I liked that one because, so I put them together. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay.